I really like Google Analytics. There's so many things you can dig out and so many things you can learn about the content on your site, how it's performing and how to improve on your site and the content overall. There's just one report in there that, I mean, it makes no sense to me that you cannot dig it out. There's just one thing that, that I am really missing in there and it's data that Google absolutely have. And that is the age of the content, like how old is the content sitting on the site. For each article, I would love to have a filter where you could just have another column telling you these articles are X weeks or months old. And this is definitely data that Google has, of course. Of course, they have the indexing date and the publishing date for all the articles on your site. So I have no clue why they didn't include it because obviously they have the data and there's a way to fix this and there's a way to get this data, not inside Google Analytics, but somewhere else. And I want to show you how to do that in the video. But let's first just talk a little bit about why I really want that metric and why you should look at that metric as well for your site and your blog. So the thing is, when you look at the overall traffic to your site and you look at the articles and all these good numbers in Google Analytics, they really don't make any sense unless you account for the age of the content because if you posted the article yesterday of course it has no traffic and it's not supposed to have any traffic yet right but if the content is a year old then it should by now be pulling in a good deal of traffic to your site and if it doesn't do that then you need to figure out what's up with it what's wrong why why was this a total miss and what can you do to improve it or maybe merge it into another article or should you really revamp it all together into something else First of all, I would say you need to take this into account when you're looking at what new content to produce for your site. You need to know where you're getting a good deal of traffic. And if you just go into Google Analytics now, like you normally would and you sort all the articles per page view or visitors just in any way like that, you want to see the top performing articles. That is a great place to go digging for great topics and how you can sort of dive deeper into what's already working there. But the other side of that coin is to figure out what's not working on your site and where are you just wasting your time and your money putting content on the site that's not moving the needle, it's not doing anything, it's not making you any money. And that's when you sort of reverse this list. So you're not looking at the articles that bring you the most traffic, but you're looking at the articles that bring you the least traffic. Those articles that bring in five page views per month or that batch of articles that just never really took off. And that data only makes sense if you could sort of filter out all the content that's like one, two, three, four months old. So I did a little analysis across the first 20 articles on my uh, four of five, I think it was the four latest sites that I've built that have gained a good deal of traffic. So I'm not talking about some of my test sites here, but actual sites where I implement all my strategies and all the stuff that I teach you guys inside the course, like exactly how I would build out a site today. And for the first 20 articles, it took between nine to 11, 12 months before they started bringing in a good deal of traffic. And then a lot of the articles would continue to climb in Google and bring more and more traffic as the site matures. But I mean, when you know that, when you know that it can take up to a year before your content really brings in a good significant amount of traffic, you need to sort of sort all these other articles out. And it makes no sense to me that Google hasn't, hasn't fixed this and doesn't have this as a filter you can just implement to sort of sort everything out. Like you would filter for a keyword in the URL or traffic or page views or bounce rate or any other metric that we find inside Google Analytics. So let's talk about how you can actually work with this data because if you're using a SOIC on your site, you also have access to their big data analytics. And that analytics is just Google Analytics on steroids if you're a publisher or a blogger or whatever you want to call what we do here. Because you have so many cool so many cool things in there. You have most of what you find inside Google Analytics and then you also have content age. And it's something that most people overlook in there because you have to set up set it up as a filter specifically. And I'll show you in a second exactly how to do that and exactly how to use that. And they have so many cool things in there. They also have content, content length, so you can sort your articles or really just take into account how many words you put on that article. That's pretty important as well when you're looking at what works and what didn't work at all to know, was it because the article was too short? Was it because it just didn't have time to rank yet? So let's dive into Soic here and I'll show you exactly how to set this filter so you can look at the articles that had time to rank. So they should by now be pulling in a good deal of traffic. 
So now we know where to start fixing things on our sites. And if you don't have access to a SOIC, I know many of you guys have a new site or maybe you just haven't gotten approved or accepted into the program yet. I know I've talked about several times in the past how I can help you guys in at 3000 page views so you don't have to wait for those magic 10,000 page views with the SOIC. And remember here that with Mediavine you need 50,000 page views and AdThrive even more 100,000 page views. So you'll definitely start out with the SOIC when you want to monetize your site and probably you want to stay there even past the 50 or 100,000 page views mark. But um, if you haven't gotten in yet and you want to get in, I cannot offer any more to help you in at the 3,000 page view mark. But even better than that, I've made something else um, because I was just flooding my key account managers with uh, sites from you guys. I sent them like hundreds of sites and it didn't really work so well at scale to sort of refer you. They worked well when I was a small channel. Now I'm gaining some momentum here and it's just too much for them to handle like that. It, needs, it needed a little more structure. So I've made a partnership with them as you have maybe heard me talk about here in the channel already. So if your site is not using a Zoic and this analytics thing and have access to the ads there and all these cool things they, are, they develop for us as publishers, um, if you join my course, you get access to Ezoic from the start of your site. You just, you just take a little mini course over at Ezoic and then you'll get accepted. Hopefully if you're not uh, violating any of Google's basic guidelines, which means that you wouldn't be able to show ads anyway from any ad network. Um, but as long as you can sort of meet the basic standards, then you can get in from day one, like when you created the site if you want to. You don't have to wait even for 3000 page views. Uh, and on top of that, um, I, they agreed to also offer everybody inside my community and my course free access to the site speed accelerator. I mean the paid tool they have to bump your site speed up. And that's really, really cool for two reasons. One, you get it for all your sites. I mean, if you have one site, that's great. But in the future, if you want to build additional sites, it's on sort of on an account level on your Zoic account there if you are sort of uh, tagged that you come from uh, my course. If you're a student uh, with my Passive Income Geek course, then you get the Site Speed Accelerator for free for all your sites and you get it for life. You get it, I mean, forever. Even if you drop out of my community and you just want to check it out for a year or two, uh, then you still have the Site Speed Accelerator. So that's just so you know that, that you have access to it if you join my course and otherwise you can always wait to the 10,000 page views mark. I mean, when you have 10,000 page views on your site per month, then you can opt in. But actually, I think if you join my course and you get in from day zero, I think you will easily earn the money, the expense for my course back before you reach the 10,000 page views mark. So I guess that's it should be a no brainer now to join my course if you want to use the Stoic on your site. But let's check out here how I set up these filters and how you can do this in, um, in the analytics tool inside Stoic. All right, let's do this. And I will say it took me a while to get this right. And I had to uh, have multiple emails fall from back with my key account managers just to make sure that I got the correct data in here. So there are some very specific steps here that you need to do exactly like I do here. So first you go to content over here and you don't go to landing pages. You go to pages here. I don't know why it doesn't work as well with landing pages, but you need to use the pages report. And then I like to take the last 30 days here um, because that's usually the metric we use when we're talking page views. So that's just what I'm most used to. Um, and then you want to set a segment up here. And this is where the magic comes in. So you go here to new segment and then you go to content here. And then we have this content age by month or week. It's pretty cool that they selected both here. So you can say here content age bigger than seven months, for example. Now you'll see all the content on your site that's eight months or older. Of course, you can do the same thing here by saying bigger off or equal and putting an eight because then you will include that eight month right? But um, bigger than seven, that should give us all the content that's older than seven months. But this is not all because you also have to go up here and choose the specific site here. And that's what I missed a couple of times because you would think that you are already only looking at the site since you chose it up here, but you have to choose your site on this drop down list here. 
So that's very important too, because otherwise you'll just have blank spaces or incorrect data. So let's click apply here, save and apply. So I already created this here. I called it eight months or older. And then you can unclick the all users because we don't want to look at that right now. And run report again. It takes a little while, especially if you have good traffic to the site. Sometimes you'll have to wait for a few minutes every time it calculates, not only for this, but for all the different reports in here. So the page speed and the load times are not the best in here, but the data you get here are just really the best data you can get on your hands as a publisher. So now many times you need to go back here, set it to 30 days again, and then you have to click apply and that's not all you also have to run the report so this is different than google analytics always click this run report thing because otherwise it doesn't update and then you have to wait again and that's just how it is you have to wait sometimes here so have a cup of coffee ready all like me a mountain dew <laughs> okay here we are i think that took like 20 seconds now we only see articles that are at least eight months old. And that's just really cool because now we can sort by page views the other way around. So we want to see the articles that have the least traffic here. Okay, so now we have an article here with only two page views, six, eight, 22. And of course, that's not what we want to see. But notice here that many of these articles out here can be your about page. It can also be just what we call a double where you have the same URL with and without the slash toward the end. It can also be uh, page two, page three, page four of the archive pages. These pages never get a lot of traffic and just category pages. And, and there will also be other URLs in here that you just need to uh, scroll past, like articles that has one of these uh, <laughs> strings attached to the URL. But you will just scroll past all the ones that had like zero, one, two, three, or four page views because if you're using the tactics that I show you, you will never have like five page views to an article. If you did find your topic with Google Autocomplete or people also ask one of the other tactics that I show you how to use, you will always have like at least a couple handful of uh, page views per month. So you can just scroll past those initial ones here and start looking at the ones that really failed, like an article that was supposed to bring in a good deal of traffic, but for some reason it's only pulling like 20, 30, 40 or 50 page views. And I want to show you another really cool little trick here that most people don't know about this analytics here. You can actually drag and drop these columns here. So I want to see this over here now. I want to have the page engagement rate over here, then I just drag and drop them. That's so cool. And it's also something that you don't get with Google Analytics. You can customize to some extent in Google Analytics, but you don't get stuff like this. And of course you can go up here in columns and you can just enable and disable everything you want. And for example, I like this average word count. It's really, really cool. Also something that's unique to Isoic Big Data Analytics. You don't have this in Google Analytics. Of course, we have the revenue and all that stuff, but really take a good deep dive into this uh, data here because you have so many cool things. You can set it up to check for your authors. Um, so you can check which author uh, is producing content that's making you more money per thousand page views, or you can even check the word count per author here when you set the filters like I'm showing you. And there's so many things you can do. So, and I would say many of these metrics here are more useful because this tool here is built for publishers. And remember Google Analytics is just for all websites and apps and stuff out there. So that's not designed specifically uh, for publishers. So you need to get your hand on this stuff here and you can even use the Zoic Big Data Analytics even though you're not using the ads from Zoic. You can still use the Big Data Analytics. You just set up your site here because remember Zoic is much much more than just ads. People think it's an ad network but really it's not. It's a big data analytics company and they do many cool things like getting your speed back up on your site. Something that Ad Thrive and Mediavine is not doing. But now there's something more you need to know about this report and I'll get back into the comfy chair right now and explain that to you. So I'm really happy to have this report now, to have access to this data here now, now that I've figured out how to do this with the SOIC. I've tried to set this up with uh, Google Data Studios 
Also with Google Excel, you can do some implementation to Google Analytics where they do make some calls in the background. And also with the Zapier, if you know that software where you can sort of build some automation processes that, that lets you pull in data from multiple sources. And I mean, what I came up with just never really looked great or worked all that well. You had to do like manual updates and runs and stuff like that. But this just works really well. And I wanna point out one uh, important thing here. You need to know where Stoic gets the data from. So how do they know when this article was published and how old it is? So it will look at the HTML data, the metadata on each article on your site. It will look for the published date in there. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean that your site or sorry, your article is, has been indexed in Google because that's something else. Sometimes it takes a while before Google uh, put your new stuff into the index. And we've seen that multiple times with Google having issues and problems with proper indexation of new content. And also they disabled and turned it on and turned off on and off this feature inside Google Search Console, where you can ask them specifically to index a new article. It's working right now <laughs> since December. Uh, it has been working again. Now we can index our sites and we can ask Google specifically to put our new articles in the index. And that's very important for a new site. And I want to tell you this because just because the article shows up as being eight months old inside uh, Stoic, that doesn't mean that it has been in the Google machine for eight months. And if Google only found your article, let's say after five, six, seven or eight weeks, that might mean that your content age is only six months, even though in the analytics with the story, it says eight months because that's according to the publishing day and not the day where the content actually was found and indexed in Google. Just so you're aware of that. And if you want to make sure that you have these tags on your site, you can always check the metadata on each article and just look for this published mark. And if you want to know exactly how to get your new articles and your new content indexed in Google as soon as possible, then you should check out this other video that I linked to in the description, uh, where I show you exactly how to use Google Search Console for bloggers. In there, I show you the main features and the basic features that you should absolutely know if you're a blogger and if you're getting serious about creating a business around your website. And um, I also show you there exactly how to ping Google, let them know that now you have a new article up there. I hope you like these tips and these videos. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.